All right, welcome back to the garage. This is Mike Torino in the Philippines. And uh, we've got a new addition to the family here. I ordered a mini skid steer from the same place that I got my uh, mini excavator. And it arrived last night. And I'm just going through the motions, checking everything out. Open up all the access panels and seeing what we got before I go ahead and run some tests on it. But so far, I, li I like it. It's uh, It looks well built. And it came uh, in a crate like the last one. And uh, getting it out of the crate this time was a lot easier using the excavator and uh, a big big strap we use to pull it out of the truck. This particular machine does come with accessories but I, I just stuck with the basic uh, scoop uh, on front but it does have the uh, accessory ports here if I ever decide to, to use an accessory but my primary motivation for buying this was to just do landscaping with the bucket and I went ahead and got rubber tracks for this one and I see I see a lot of an, a lot of improvements from what I've seen on the excavator uh, if you remember on the excavator your track uh, track adjusters were hard to get to and they changed that to uh, a female zerk fitting right here so it's, it's going to be very very simple to make your uh, track adjustments and uh, just by looking around the machine I can see evidence of proper greasing from the factory so that's one thing that, you know, I've got squeeze out everywhere that's one thing I won't have to worry about. But this machine is is called a mini skid steer and you ride standing on this plate in the back and you hold on to these uh, hand grips here to manipulate uh, your direction of travel as well as the boom and the, and the bucket. Uh, this particular model actually comes with a uh, volt outlet which is cool fuel gauge uh, oil temperature gauge hydraulic oil temperature gauge hour meter lights I've got two LED lights here a horn and some indicators and throttle here and then the battery disconnect here I'll show you a little bit about the the inside of the back cover. It's actually a, a little tighter to work with than the excavator. Uh, but first, first thing I'll show you is where the the engine oil dipstick is w way back in under here where my hand is. You can't really see it. You can feel it or you can use a inspection mirror to, to take a look at it. And it's even difficult to find with a mirror, but it's down there. It's just a short little dipstick, and uh, it was reading the correct amount of oil. And that was my first main concern. And I just gave everything else just uh, a, a quick look, checking connections, checking tightness of bolts and fasteners. Um, the only thing that I found that I really didn't like so far is these, you can see this wire loom here. It wasn't secured to anything. Uh, like here is a, a relay and it even has a bracket. It could have been just secured like that. And it's just it's just a lot of loose wires. Here's some fuse, some fuses which have attachment points, but there's nowhere to attach them to. So I'm gonna clean this up. It's not too concerning. I did find the uh, the ground wire for the oil oil uh, temperature gauge was off. It was just completely off. It wasn't 
bolted anywhere. But once I, uh, I fixed that, my oil temperature gauge started working. And uh, I'm just hoping my hour meter is gonna is gonna work. I I haven't seen it turn over yet, but the one on the excavator was a pain. Um, so I'm hoping this one works. So other than that, um, got some good pickup points here. Two on the back, and there's two two here on the front as well. So I'll I'll uh, bring you back when I I've got some questions to the manufacturer. Waiting to hear from them about uh, the fuel gauge. Fuel gauge is, is has got power, but it's not registering. The needle isn't registering, and I have I put a fuel tank, full tank of diesel in it. So I'm going to wait to hear from her, and then I'll make a video of the operating the machine a little bit. So one thing I didn't show you yet is the uh, what I call the hood. Is uh, this hood lifts up for access, and once you unlock this, push push the key down, and then you can turn the latch, and this lifts up, and you can gain access to the top of the engine as well as um, your hydraulic fill port down there. And th this machine is unique because it has a electric fan behind this radiator to cool the hydraulic fluid, which is something the excavator doesn't have. And uh, I don't think I mentioned, this is a two-cylinder diesel and the manufacturer is Coop, K-O-O-P, Coop. And uh, it seems to run okay so far, but we'll find out more. Uh, and another thing I noticed is that this, the hood, once you bring it up, see how it hits the, the lights? So I'm not sure why the lights are there. It seems like if they put them right here, it, they could have uh, relocated those there. That would, I think that would allow me to to raise the hood all the way and have it self-supporting but in, until I move those I think wow I've been using it just a piece of steel to hold it up while I work on here but this is uh, kind of cool the way you can get access to here and if you look here the hydraulic radiator is actually on hinges so you could theoretically Un unbolt that and rotate your radiator up out of the way to get access to under there to the battery and to the hydraulic reservoir without uh, without uh, disconnecting any hydraulic lines and getting air in the system. So pretty nice so far. We'll see you later.